Thank you. Okay, so the legal voters of the River Valley Unified School District comprising <coughs> the voters of the town of Dover Mordsboro are notified and warned to meet at Dover Town Hall in Dover, Vermont to conduct the following business. Um, one, we'll let the moderator to serve the fiscal year. And Dr. Backus is the current moderator, and he has agreed to, and i got to keep reminding myself to call him, um, he's agreed to be the moderator again for this year. Everybody okay with that? Article 2A, to elect a clerk to serve from July 1, 2018 to June 30, 2019. <coughs> Andy McLean is currently the clerk. He's agreed to serve again as long as we set a stipend, which is Article B. Any questions about that? Um, the Wardsboro clerk was contacted, and she had wanted nothing to do with it. So if everybody's okay with that, move on. Set a stipend of 2000 for the clerk's position. Andy asked for that because the first ballot vote, the first vote for the budget has to be commingled ballots, which creates a little bit of an issue. So he said it's not as simple as just doing a, a vote. So um, he asked for that for the first year, and we as a group agreed. So everybody good with that? Article 3 to elect the WCSU treasurer to serve from July 1st, 2018 to June 30, 2019. We're going to ask for a friendly amendment to um, to not elect the WCSU treasurer, but to elect the current um, River Valley's treasurer, which is Marco Tolini. Um, after some consideration, the SU asked us not to. They like the separation of. You weren't at the last one. Oh, well, so the WCSU was asked that we not have the WCSU treasurer be elected for each of the school districts because it's they want to separate it out and have more checks and balances. So they're going to recommend to River Valleys and to the Leland and Gray group that they um, that they hire they they uh, elect somebody from within. It'll involve a couple days a month, a couple hours, twice a month to go to central office and review pay warrants and sign checks. We're like, we'll review the pay warrants, they'll look at them, sign the check that coordinates with that, and that'll be the check and balance. So the person creating the the checks and creating the um, the accounts payable is will not be the same person that's signing the checks. Um, and Marco agreed to it. Um, we did set a stipend for that that Marco was good with because for the first year, there's really not going to be a lot of stuff they have to do. And I think, is that everything we kind of talked about at the last meeting? Did I miss anything? And the Wardsboro Treasurer is the same as a town clerk, and she wants nothing to do with it right. again. Didn't we throw something in there in case they did have to run back a board quite a bit to compensate? Well, mileage. For mileage. Right? right. So I think that would be amended under, under Section B for the stipend. So is everybody okay with that and understand that? And any questions on that? You look confused. Me? Oh, yeah. No. Okay. No. No, he may, um, but WCSU will still do all the paperwork and still do all the accounting. Oh, okay. Um, the only thing that the treasurer does is will review the, the, the payments and then just sign the checks. Everybody good? Yep. Um, to set a stipend of $500 for the treasurer's position, um, we'd ask for a friendly amendment to amend that motion to include mileage for the, um, you, you know, set at the, that monthly mileage set by the government. Um, you know, if, from, if the, like the Leland and Gray towns, if it's somebody from Harmonyville, it's pretty easy they can walk across the street or whatever. Marco does have to drive half an hour. Um, Marco actually was going to say he'd do it for nothing, but I, I, I think he should get something because... Yeah. I mean, it is going to be at least once a month you'll have to go sign stuff. Everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then um, Article 4 is the vote compensation for the directors at $1,000. Wardsboro currently gets 200 Dover gets 2000 so we kind of settled in the middle. I don't know if it's exactly in the middle, but it's Not close. Exactly. But I never did very good math either. Mm -hmm. Everybody good with that? Yes. Sure. Oh, come on, somebody out there should say, oh, you guys are worth 10000 <laughs> each. 
Yeah, we also ought to clarify that that's each. That's not a thousand dollars total. Yeah, what's the share? Yeah. <laughs> we can put it in, in singles and throw it on the floor. We can all rumble for it. Um, set the date of the annual meeting as the second Tuesday in February. Odd years in Wardsboro and even years in Dover at the town halls in the respective towns. Um, and that's something, you know, the first meeting was obviously in an odd year, and that was in Wardsboro, so it didn't doesn't mean anything that Dover's even and Wardsboro's odd. It's just how it roll the dice. Any questions? No. Nope. Then Article 6 is to transact any other business, and we included several things to discuss um, just to um, just to have discussion. So A was to review the board director meeting location and date. So <coughs> Currently, we meet the first and third Mondays, first Mondays in Wardsboro at 7, and the third Monday in Dover at 7. Everybody good? Mm -hmm. Review the work done by the board directors to this date. Mm -hmm. You've been coming to a lot of them. I don't have to review it for you, do we? Oh, me? Mm -hmm. Both you guys. <laughs> I don't think okay, you, have, you weren't at the last one in Dover, no, Dover. so. No, I wasn't at the last one. Yeah. So do you guys? I mean, you've been coming to meetings, though. I mean, well, we we adopted. Um, I'm trying to be a good citizen. <laughs> we adopted. Well, we actually sent the data copy of the timeline, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And we adopted sure several policies, boilerplate policies. Yeah. We um, we're work, we've worked on a mission statement. We worked on a timeline. Vision statement. We're working on the vision. We don't have that yet. Anything else? Oh, and I must have done something else. Yes, our uh, capital study. Yes, <clears throat> which you're going to talk about at the next meeting. That's right. Review the work calendar of the board of directors through September 2019, which I think everybody's seen that, right? Richard, are yes. we envisioning having that as like a printed available? I think we should. What do you yeah. guys think? The work calendar? I think so. Yeah. Sure. yeah. I mean, we can take December and January off because we're in February. I guess. Okay. Or put it as what well, we can achieve. Right. Oh. What we've achieved, what we've done. If you'd like, I can compact that onto one side of one page. Cool. Can you do that for us? I will do that happily. Thank you. Great. Excellent. Is that, if I do try to do it, it wouldn't look pretty. I'll do it. Discuss the election of directors representing Wardsboro. Dover's always elected by ballot. Wardsboro's always elected from the floor. Our articles of agreement say that articles of not agreement. What was it? Articles of our articles say that um, everybody will be elected by ballot. So we want to just have a discussion because it's a feeling of the attorneys and with the work of our clerk that we can just change that by a voice by a vote of the board. Mm -hmm. Not a, it doesn't need to be a vote of any public. So we just want to, especially since the meetings in Wardsboro. You know, does Wardsboro still want to elect from the floor? And, and you know, which, you know, somebody from Wardsboro, you guys can talk to that. Sure. If you want, or yeah. just give pros and cons. So, I spoke to Jack at the town hall about it. She didn't really have an opinion. I was hoping she would kind of give us some direction. I'm safe at she'd rather. No. <laughs> well, you know, there's, the, like you said, the pros and cons either way. And, it's and, easier uh, because there's no, no having to get a petition, no having to get signatures. You just show up. Right. And you hopefully you have one friend or mm -hmm. not too many enemies that not yeah. many. really just show up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean years some years it's been a problem just to get some just to get well last one I hand. went to last yeah. year. Mm -hmm. You yeah. didn't get you anybody like. at the meeting, did you? No. I think because uh, you got appointed after the fact. Right. <coughs> no, we still had a vacancy after the meeting. Yeah, there's always been yeah, 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 problems yeah, tough because it's everybody everybody declined when they were right. They were yeah, and you guys went around the room, I think too. I mean you yeah, tried was, a yeah, bunch of different people. It's kind of a tradition in Wardsboro to go around the room and try to fill boxes. <laughs> um, but you know you're on TV and everybody's <laughs> Wardsboro sorry. now. I'm not saying anything that I didn't say it. He did. <laughs> but it is. It's, it's you know you have to come to the, you come to the meetings and it's it's you know, people are put on the spot and then people step forward at the meeting. So it's kind of it is kind of a tradition for us. So, so I don't know whether or not that's a good thing or bad. Uh, Do you have to be present to be nominated? No. <laughs> see, I'm really surprised, <laughs> oh, really? I'm really surprised yeah, you see. haven't filled them all. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, nobody wants them. Yeah, well, then they would they would doesn't decline in any ways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. We all had to get elected. 
So, but we, I think we'll, we'll talk about it. At the, right? yeah. yeah, and you know, it's basically mm -hmm. a wards bureau. You know, whatever wards, and we also found out that you can do, you can be split because, because there's no at large person. Dover can do it one way, and Wardsboro can do it the other way. Right. Right. Um. Hey guys. Sorry. Discuss the budget vote in February 2019, as well as budget votes thereafter. So our articles also say our first budget vote has to be voted by ballot. There's a lot of pros and cons, and Andy has a really good graph um, that we're, we're going to pass out. Um, we should get that graph to you. Um, Carrie, if you, you're not here tomorrow night, right? No. We'll get, Andy's coming tomorrow night, so we'll get a graph, and somebody can get it to Anita. I have a copy. You, you, wanna, you got the you color want. one? Yeah. Okay. No, the color is in red highlight, green highlight. Yeah. So... Um, Oh, good. She's here. Do you mind giving it to him? Okay. So this is something you may want to get out. Sure. Um, there's a, so Andy did, a, you know, pros and cons. And Dover and Wardsboro both currently vote their budget from the floor. Um, the pros are you get to discuss things. You, you know what the voters are looking for. Um, you kind of have an idea from discussion. Um, you know, why, if people are upset about a, a budget, they'll tell you why they're upset or what they're upset about. Um, voting by ballot, you pre maybe get more people to actually vote because they can just come in at any time. They don't have to reserve a time to come to your meeting. Um, or it's not like town meeting where you have to take the day off from work. Wardsboro, you have your meeting at night. And Rick, you said it didn't make a big difference when you changed over? It did the first year there were more people that came. The first year we did it, but you know things have dwindled with time. Yeah. In general, I think turnout in town here, at least, has become less and less over time. So I've always been told that's a sign that you're doing a really good job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so th there is a possibility, and that is is like and can, now I can't remember. Can the board just vote to change the? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to go before the voters, but we'd like to get their input. Mm -hmm. After the first, after the first passed. one, right? Laura's, is that right? Laura's got is that that right? Gunner. I'm pretty sure. Is that right? After the first one has to be approved. the first yes. one has yes. to be by ballot. So, yeah. okay. but I think after that, the board can vote to to do a floor vote. So, but it would only be in that one town. So you would have to go, you know, like for 2019, you would if you were to. Or say 2020, you would have to go to Dover to vote in person. You couldn't sit in Wardsboro and vote in person. You would have to be where the meeting right, is. Right, because there only be one meeting. Right. 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 And we do have in our articles that we will do meetings, pre-meetings in both towns, and, and that's what we're doing now. We do two in each town beforehand. This is Australian ballot that needs to go to Dover in order to vote for it? No, if it's Australian ballot, you can vote in your in town. town. Okay. But the votes, However, the, the, vote, the, the votes are mingled. Right. So what happens is the two bags get, I guess, dumped together and, and shaken together. up. And right. So if you do vote by, if you do vote in person by, by voice vote, you know, the, you could say, oh wow, look at there's all the Wardsboro people, and there's all the Dover people, and, you know, there's a little more anonymity if you're voting by, by ballot. There's a lot of anonymity. But then again, the the, the con to that is is. If the budget budget gets voted down, you don't know it could have been voted down because it wasn't enough, or yeah. they, you know, you took something I mean, out that they really wanted. Yeah, it's the richness of that feedback, particularly with the new district coming together. I really. And the yeah. first one is it's going to be difficult. Yeah. But we do have we will have a meeting prior to the vote. Yeah. That we can we, discuss we, the budget. Four. Well, right. Be two but in I'm each town. on, a, on yeah. a yearly basis. We'll have a right. meeting prior to the. Right. And, you know, the other thing would be interesting to see what the turnout is maybe for that first Australian ballot vote, too. Because that can be done at town meeting. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, we would still have to have our regular meeting. We would still have an annual meeting where we'd elect the officers. Mm -hmm. But you wouldn't have um, you wouldn't have the budget vote. So we wouldn't know what the budget was going to be until. Okay. Yeah. But we would get to, so actually there'd be five times, because we'd also get to discuss the budget probably then, too, as an article. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody good with that? And then any other public concerns that can legally be discussed? 
vague. Vague. I'm, I'm <laughs> concerned the buildings are white. I want to see brown buildings, right. red buildings. Weren't schoolhouses supposed to be red? Anybody think anything? Come on, you always got something. <laughs> Not this time. Not this Sorry. time. Sorry. Sorry to disappoint you. I'm well done. Did you be sorry? Yeah, we all signed it. I, I think after you know this first meeting, I think it's. Act, I, I'm hopeful that after this first meeting, there will be um, additional guidance. I mean, it's fine for us to you know keep making it up as we go along. Um, you know, it's nice to also have some you know feedback, positive negative, whatever the case may be. But I agree, you know. Often if you're hearing nothing, it means there's no problem. I just said to Rick, we, we won't see anybody until we until our first mm -hmm. mess up. Right. Right. <laughs> well, and, and I think too, you know, when, when you get towards like transportation, when you get towards yeah. the policy on, you know, which building yeah. you're allowed to attend, then, then I, I think we'll get some feedback and, you know, Carrie's working on the, um, Survey. survey and hopefully we'll get some feedback from that um, and you know we'll get feedback just from people in the public seeing you hey Rick guess what I wasn't happy I watched you on TV the other night you guys all good anything else to discuss I think we're okay to move into our regular meeting a little early <clears throat> so our school director meeting is called to order for River Valley Unified School District. First thing we have is additions in or changes to the agenda. Anybody got anything they, they saw that they didn't like? Next thing is uh, members of the public. Anita, you can go first. Yes. This is public. This isn't your, no. your liaison thing. No, I am here as a communications. Right. Right. Okay. You got anything for public? Cool. We got the minutes of the January 15, 2018 meeting. If somebody wants to make a motion to approve those. Rick's shaking his head so yes. I'll take that as a move. I'll second. Barry seconds it. All those in favor say aye. Aye. So because not everybody's on a regular school board. Go ahead. <laughs> no, that's okay. Too loud. Um, <laughs> we um, did everybody who's you. I guess you're not on the. You and Red. I'm not. Did you see the super? Did you get copies of the superintendent's report? No, he might send it to me. Okay, I'm not sure. Here's either. one. There's one. There's one here. Yeah. So yeah, no, yeah. Bill. No, Bill no, always no, gives out. One? Bill gives out. A, I'm all set. Yeah, Bill always sends out a monthly cabinet report. He gets reports from. Um, you know, different. Oh, yeah, you won't see yours till tomorrow night. Tomorrow right? night. I got it. Then you got a sneak preview. Sneak preview. So, anyways, um, Bill always has, you know, like all the different uh, professional staff in his office, you know, talk about what they're doing. It's a really kind of good overview of what's going on at Wyndham Central. So, we'll just we'll have that available at the meetings in case anybody wants to look at it. Um, and if there's anything you see in it, use. Can we can make sure they get added on to the email list? Yes. They should be there, I thought, anyways. I'm going to append this to the minutes. Yeah, but so they can have it ahead of time. So if there's any questions, we can add the superintendent's report to the consent agenda. And then if there's no questions, then we don't have to we don't have to review it. So if you see anything on that, we're going to play a little, since we have a little extra time. On, We'll, um, if you see something, we'll come back to you later if you have any questions on that. Bill, anything as a superintendent? Um, it just might be good to um, update them on our visit to uh, Secretary Holcomb. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so uh, the WCSU officers um, and uh, myself got to so. visit. Two out of the three WCSU officers and myself got to visit with Secretary Holcomb on January 8th. Um, they were charged by the WCSU board to uh, follow up on the governance study between uh, Wyndham Central and Wyndham Southwest that was commissioned by the Agency of Education that was published in June of 2017 and discussed at the retreat for the WCSU in September of 2017. And uh, we went up and met with the secretary because part of the study was a recommendation to have uh, two supervisory unions merged 
And so uh, the officers were able to ask questions of Secretary Holcomb to understand um, what, what she was thinking about um, in uh, requesting that study and in thinking about creating the statewide plan. So on June 1st of this year, Secretary Holcomb will present a, a statewide plan that will include all the districts that have merged under Act 46, like you guys, um, and a recommendation based on all the alternative governance structure proposals, as well as any supervisory union mergers um, that can happen under the statewide plan. And um, so the uh, officers were able to ask her some uh, questions. She explained that um, already under Act 46, four uh, supervisory unions have merged and that several supervisory unions are um, under consideration for inclusion in the statewide plan for merger. She gave us uh, an example of three different types of possibilities. Uh, one would be where there is, are two contiguous supervisory unions and one supervisory union was dispersed to surrounding supervisory unions. So um, all those supervisory unions would be uh, responsible for more districts and that other supervisory union would cease to exist. Another one would be where there are two supervisory unions that are contiguous to each other and uh, they have equal uh, or similar uh, capacity in the central office. Uh, they have systems in place. Uh, they have collaboration that is uh, uh, evident and that uh, the AOE would work with the two boards uh, to figure out a way to decide on how to merge those two uh, have some sort of process to um, select a, uh, the leadership at the central office level for that new merged supervisory union. Um, and then a third case would be that you have two uh, contiguous supervisory unions and one supervisory union uh, might have more systems and uh, a robust uh, central office and collaboration system already in place and the uh, other supervisory union might not have uh, those things in place at this time and so that the AOE might recommend to the boards that one um, supervisory union uh, uh, take over the other supervisory union. Uh, of course, a follow-up question to that is where do you see this study going? And uh, there was no showing of the hand of uh, where uh, this would play out. Um, the Secretary is very uh, forthcoming about doing a deep dive into not only uh, the um, study that was done on the governance, but also looking at all the factors regionally. And um, they were very uh, interested in making sure that we have uh, highly functional, deep capacity uh, central offices that can deliver upon the promise of educational quality standards for our students. And um, she uh, definitely let us know that, that it would not be a surprise as to what the outcome would be on June 1st. She will be uh, inviting supervisory unions that are up for merger, those officers of those uh, boards, um, to meet and have conversations February, March, April, maybe a little bit of May, most likely on Mondays because the legislature is not in session. And that invitation will come through the uh, supervisory union offices and will be shared with the officers of the separate boards. Um, so uh, that conversation would occur, so therefore, um, it should not be a surprise in June if a merger is um, put forth in the draft plan. After that happens on June 1st, um, there's another six month uh, series of opportunities to uh, go in front of the State Board of Education where boards will be able to go in front of the State Board of Education and um, ask for uh, something different than it, that was in the statewide plan. Um, did I hit it, Rich? It was a very productive and uh, respectful meeting. Should I have a quick question? Oh, go ahead. So I know with the alternative structures, I've heard um, uh, that there is, you know, some folks have refused to participate um, in the state, uh, just in general, um, and other items. Uh, and, I've, and I've heard uh, that Providing some information is better than providing no information um, regarding choices where one would like to see one's district 
something is better than silence. Um, so in terms of this conversation, <coughs> do you have any indication that that is that something would like to be heard? Or did this report already serve as the hearing? I mean, is that kind of given the indication? Uh, no, I, I, I uh, definitely got the sense that uh, they were just at the beginning of thinking about this. Yeah. And that uh, as they did more thinking, they would be asking for the officers of the boards to come up to have those uh, deeper conversations before decisions were made. I, I think actually several times she made the point of saying, look at the date on this and a lot has changed. So it's like that specific report is not... Not the driver. Right. Yeah. Okay, so can I ask another question, yeah, Chair, Superintendent, and I apologize if I've missed this. Um, is this an agenda item for discussion on the um, Supervisory Union agenda? Oh, yeah, it will be. March 21st? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because we have to report back to the board, to the WCSU board. So I'm also um, often in favor. I'm going to try and make that meeting. It's going to be challenging, I'm sure. It won't be a Monday night. Um, I'm also <coughs> often in favor of, you know, whenever possible, choosing one's destiny. So. I think pretty much everybody is. Great. That's good. I mean, I've never heard any anybody in WCSU from when we started this whole conversation <coughs> say that they wanted to just throw their hands up and let happen what will happen. That would not necessarily. I don't know. And I'm not going to really, this will probably upset you, but I, I don't know that that's my perception of how that conversation has gone over the years. So, really? Yes, because I feel like I've been asking for us to be more forward thinking about what's around and us. And we did, and we tried to be I forward thinking. Uh, it's not a criticism and, of you, Richard. Yeah. No, I'm just saying, I think the Wyndham Central Board has worked very hard to try to control our own destiny the best we can. So I, I don't believe there's ever been a person on the Wyndham Central Board that just said, you know what, we're not going to do anything. We'll let whatever happens, happens, or we're just going to ignore the law. And that is not at all what I... No, I, I know that, but I mean... That's I, not what, well, I want to be clear that that is not what I yeah. am inferring right. at all. I think maybe some other places bury their head in the sand, but I don't think okay. anybody here did. Anyway, moving on. This all sounds so familiar um, from Act 46. So is this a, is this a result of the, the mergers that they're determining that we need to consolidate the, the union? Is that, um, is that I would say that this was all uh, a part of the larger conversation of um, uh, looking at uh, the state as a whole and um, creating sustainable, viable systems for the delivery of the educational quality standards of students. Um, this statute has been on the books for over 50 years that the State Board of Education has the ability to redraw supervisory union uh, lines. And so I think it, it's natural to think during this time of looking at the state as a whole during the development of a statewide plan, it would make sense that um, supervisory unions that have been in consideration or thought of that that might work, um, this would be a natural time to do that. <coughs> Uh, the study that was finished in June of 2017 was the third study that's been done over the last dozen years of these two particular supervisory unions. So um, I think it has been an ongoing conversation, and this is the natural time to see if it fits into the uh, statewide plan. Any other comments? Thoughts? Okay. Communications report. This is you. This is me. So you got the Bucketville news here. So the Bucketville came out. Um, they gave us a full page. It's in all the calendar and everything. So they were very generous with their space. Um, the editor, publisher, did point out to me that if you were to, to do a direct mail piece in the town of Wardsboro, it's like some 50-50 cost sharing deal using somebody else's bulk permit yada 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 I didn't pay attention to the whole thing because I didn't know if this board would ever mail only to Wardsboro and not to Dover or whatever so that's always an option she said if 
you know, she sort of implied we can't use up her whole newsletter for our stuff, is what it kind of sounded sounded like. And, and, and so I said I would bring that matter to the board. So there, um, press releases uh, went out about everything. Um, um, there were many notices about these meetings today and tomorrow. Um, tomorrow, after tomorrow's meeting, I'll send out another mini notice that hopefully will get picked up for the um, meeting on the 13th. Um, front porch has been updated. The website is up to date and current. And there have been no uh, comments uh, coming through on the uh, email that I maintain through WCSU, except Mark, who found a boo boo in one of my pages and helped me fix it. Um, <laughs> And other than that, I'm open to questions from you all. What else you think you need me to do, want me to do, help participate in, let me know. Any comments for Nina? <clears throat> so, so far, so good. Um, the material is there. The website has had about a thousand hits, but again, there's no way to know if those are real people or bots. We're not paying for sophisticated analytics. So all I can tell you is that 99.9% .9 of the hits are the United States of America. So we're not getting hit by bots from Madagascar. Um, other than that, most of the page views are for the minutes, which uh, leads me to believe that people are tapping into the videos, which is excellent. Um, if people are watching the videos, that's a good thing. That's, I take that as in lieu of being here in person. And Rich is so much fun to have here. Well, he just gets mercilessly teased, does he yeah. not? He's on vacation. We know. <laughs> mm -hmm. But remember, say hello to him, right? yeah, we all say, hey, you having fun on vacation? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. um, so yeah, you? so once again, I want to um, on camera mention that if you have questions about what the board's doing, go to the blog site. Um, um, it has everything there that you need to know. There's a little click box to ask a question. Uh, that question comes through me and it goes to the board at the next possible board meeting. And uh, so it's um, River Valley School District .blogspot com. Maybe we could put a little tape under the screen on that when we pu publish that um, online. So that's my info, Marshall. Cool. Have there been any questions to the blog? No. Yeah, almost on every page it has a little click box for ask a question, ask a question, <coughs> but there's been no questions. Okay. So I, I want to ask a quick one, it's kind of off topic. What is the Bucketville News? Because we kept talking about mm -hmm. it. this is the first time I've seen it. Is this just something? Yeah, I know I brought that to you a couple times no, during that, the Act 46. But I never actually read it. So it started out many, many years ago as a project here at the Wordsboro Elementary School. And then the class or the people who were doing it just sort of floated it out. And then Nancy Perkins, who lives around the corner, uh, took it upon herself to keep it going. And it is a bunch of volunteers who write the articles, put the information together, sell the ads. Uh, it comes out once a month. It's mailed to 350 zip uh, addresses. Um, and I would say approximately 50% of the zip codes are out of state, which leads me to believe they're second homeowners. Uh, it's free. Um, and about um, 25 copies are left at each of the general stores in town and at the library. And then about, I would say, maybe 50-ish people subscribe online. And it's always posted online at wordsboroughvermont.com. So if anybody's interested in it and they don't get it in the mail or um, uh, by email, they can just go to wordsboroughvermont.com uh, and click on it and get it there. So it's, it's just a little sort of community newsletter, um, as if Facebook doesn't exist. <laughs> cool. Are we all good with communications? And you know, I'm so thankful for you doing this. It really does make life easier. So well, thank you. I'm happy that's to your participate. Pat on the, back. the next thing on the agenda is um, we've got old business, Act 46 Study Committee budget over. So, um, if you want to pass one of that table, and then so when we did our our um, study to go, go to a vote for the articles. Um, we were on, there's a couple things that we were under the impression of, and I know we've reviewed this in the past. Um, we thought each group got $150,000, and we thought that each group um, we could use um, 
we ran over with the study, and our big expense with the study was the Vermont School Boards Association, um, which was like fifteen thousand seven hundred dollars to us. And we thought we could just then, when we got the hundred and fifty thousand, which became one hundred and fifty for both, and we thought we could just pay the overage out of that. We found out that we couldn't. So this breakdown shows that we went over our budget by seventy eight hundred dollars, seventy eight seventy three. Um, so there's tw each school is responsible for 26, 24, 27. Um, okay. We had originally. Huh. What? Okay. Okay. Is Marlboro responsible for anything? Yeah. So we originally mm -hmm. said, hey, since Wardsboro oh, and Dover agreed there. to go together, you know, we should absorb that, and not, um, not have Marlboro pay for any of that because they voted not to join us. Um, but Marlboro was able to use everything that we did in our study. A lot of that was in their request to become an alternative structure. So I did speak to Douglas Corb, who is their chairman, and he said he had no, he brought up to his board, his board has no problem. So we're just, each school board, it doesn't really affect us, but now Bill's going to go to each school board and bill them for $2,624.27. Um, so just so everybody's aware of that. Any questions, comments? When you say you went over, what was our what were we given? I thought this, I thought this came out of the original one hundred and fifty. So no, there was there was three grants that we got. Our first grant was we got this. It's um, I forget the name Explorer of it. Permit. Right, that was like Explorer five thousand dollars. That's where Wyndham Central kind of narrowed down our options because mm -hmm. we had all those alternative structures. Then after that, we decided to do the elementary and then the K-12 study groups. Right. So we got grants for those, and we thought um, we thought that was a one-time grant because we originally, Stephen said, oh, well, we'll ask for like $12,000. Like, Stephen, we can get up to 25? 20. 20. Why don't we get 20? Because, I mean, you know, that way, who knows? And, you know, things that we weren't thinking of is, okay. you know, um, both districts hired Anita. Um, I, what was Five Maples? Printing. Okay. <coughs> right, Jones is attorney. Um, so we had some expenses in the television. You know, it's, it's fourteen. It's a hundred dollars every time they come up. Um, so we must have had fourteen meetings that they covered. So we um, we thought that we went over. We went twenty four. We knew we were going to go over. We talked about it ahead of time. We just said, well, we could. We were under the assumption in our. Our consultant was under the assumption, well, if you approve this, you'll have this $150,000 grant. You can use that to cover the overage. And the overage was only, again, 7800 bucks. Right. Um, and we thought a lot of it was because of communications that we weren't going to do. Um, Laura was a big proponent of the videotaping. If you, if you just take you know, the videotaping and you take Anita's, um, you know, there's half your, your increase. Um, or half your overage, I'm sorry, not increase. So, it, you know, but I think that was all important stuff. Um, and obviously it worked because two towns approved it, so um, it's not a huge deal. And then, then we found out, too, that it's 150 for the SU, not for each district, and, you know, just kept getting worse. So the, so the, so each school is going to be billed for that? Is that just a way of keeping it separate from the other yeah. grant that's given to us? Keep those right. two. We're not allowed to. We're not allowed. Not we, allowed wanted, to. we wanted to pay that. We, that's what that's we're seventeen out of that. One fifty. Right. We weren't allowed to do that. Okay. Yep. So you'll have you'll have this discussion at your school board. Can't wait. And then we'll have our <laughs> a discussion on the nineteenth. Right. With our school board. Yep. Okay. Got it. And just don't you know blame the previous administration. <laughs> you weren't there. It was not their fault. Right. Um, building assessment engineering study update. Dwight. All right, we're moving along. Um, cool. So I've gotten two uh, proposals, well, one per, for each school um, from one of the engineer studies. So um, I'm still waiting on two others so we can have something to compare them to. But right now we know, um, or I know a, kind of a basic number of what the cost is for each building. For this study, they wanted about $3,200 for Dover and about uh, two grand for Wardsboro. Um, and, and those each town is voted to pay 
um, um, for that study. So it's not as if this is going to be coming with the payments coming from the school uh, itself. So um, we're getting there. I need uh, I need two more, and then we'll have something to compare it to. So then what we can make a vote, and whatever this board decides, then the um, the ward the individual school boards have we'll will have approve we'll have, because they've already approved up to five thousand. We know it's going to be less than that. So that's the good news. So, um, do you know when you're going to get your other bids? I'm open to have it for the, the next meeting, so I'll hopefully I'll have it by then. Tomorrow? Tomorrow? Huh? No, not that one. <laughs> Tomorrow? <laughs> no, two weeks. It's a joke, Dwight. <laughs> so, I know I just hired some studies for three different developments, and they're all about two to three months out. Oh, really? So, I think the other thing we need to find out is when. When we have them? Yeah, because okay. I mean, if somebody maybe well, has a good price, but they can't do it till September when they, or October. When they do it. Oh, I see. Yeah, because then that's not okay. going to give the administration enough time to factor that into what? Right. preparing a budget. So okay. All right. Any so other? I the minute, maybe next meeting we'll make a determination on one forward. Go ahead, Lori. Mm -hmm. Anybody? Rick. Sounds good. Next one. Thank you. Anybody out there? No? Cool. Carrie. Mary McDonald, Katie, you are up. Public your um, your survey. So I didn't make copies. Do you have any? I just have the one. I didn't make extra okay. copies. I have a copy I wrote on. We can make copies here. But I just, what I was hoping for is that we can take a look at the questions. I took it from maybe a month ago at yep. a meeting that we had, getting some feedback from the audience, from parents, about what they wanted to see. Um, as part of the questionnaire and to maybe finalize that so that we yeah. can decide no, we should, next step. We have some time, so let's, let's spend some time okay. on this. Do you mind? We can project it on the oh, screen. Oh, project it. That would be cool. Yeah, great. Right. Oh, that's going to mess oh. up your your uh, your camera lady. Do you have that, Matt? Yeah. You sent the one you sent? By I did, yeah. yeah. The one She sent just a new one. Yeah, a few days ago? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That a week ago? 20 days ago. It's yes. just warming up. That's the one that's the second draft, right? Second yeah. Draft. Well, we could without it up there. I mean, we start the first. The first question I think is pretty pretty easy. First question: What category best describes you? Because we want to know who it is that um, is taking the survey. Uh, Wardsboro or Dur Dover primary residents without school age children in the district. Wardsboro or Dover primary residents with school age children in the district. Or Wardsboro or Dover secondary resident business owner. I don't think there was any questions about that. The next, what factor is the most important to you in school? Well, hang on. Just on, so on the first one, is everybody good with that? Any comments or any thoughts? That's good. Are you missing anybody? No, I just didn't know. Somebody I had heard just from somebody in public is do you want to divide up boards more and over people too just to see if there's any any difference. And I think since most everything's commingled, I kinda liked it. I don't did you hear anything, Carrie, from people when you talked to them? No, I, I mean I just I don't think we want to get the business of dividing I, no. towns no. up at yeah. all. And my I mean, my, my intent was not to together. Yeah. No, no, I so. no I agree, but I just it was brought up so Okay. Number two. What factors are the most important uh, to you that the River Valley's Unified School District consider planning for its startup in July 2019 and rate their importance? This is a bigger question where we were getting a lot of feedback maybe a month ago at one of our meetings and talking about all the different programs. And I think they were questions from parents and um, community members about the different programs and whether or not they were going to be continuing in the new unified school district in which you were talking about we don't have a set program that's something that we're going to get feedback and that the administration was going to come set the program um, so these are all different topics of what you know we're wondering about what's important when we're thinking about creating Matt, can this you get new so school that district. all the different ones show so that the, we don't see yeah Sorry. so those are all the ones that that carrie came up with can I, I want to go back. Sorry. Question one. Yeah. So just about um, no. thank you, Matt. Here so would we would it be helpful for us to understand um, if 
one set of parents or residents or the other. I know we're all going to be one. I know we are all one. Uh, but it would be would it be helpful for us to understand if it was really only Dover parents that were um, elevating laughter highly and not Wardsboro parents, or if only Wardsboro parents were um, wanting us to consider not combining grades and Dover was fine. What would we do with that information? So if we don't have that information, does that handicap us in terms of getting information or helping address questions or that's the only I agree in, in not dividing people but also understanding where so if we if we don't divide people and we see that we have a challenge with people really being concerned about the laughter program do I mean we just put that out there to every well I guess I guess that's just something that the board would take care of so we wouldn't I'm sorry I'm just kind of talking this through I'm, yeah. I'm not, I don't have a predisposed kind of conclusion here is there any comments from the board I, I guess I'll say we, this is just one avenue that we have to get information yep. from people and when we were in Wardsboro we're gonna probably hear from the Wardsboro people mm -hmm. I kind of like in this way of mm -hmm. doing it of, of combining okay. because it gives an overview whereas the individual meetings will get input from those towns um, but I do see your point. It makes sense to to know where the where the problems lie. Okay, so, I could go either way. Really. But I think we'll find out when we yeah. go to a meeting and people show up and, you know, from the town swap. You know, my my mm -hmm. thought being though is is you know with meetings they're so tough for people to make. You know, we were hoping that this is going to be the biggest right. supplier of information to us. So, again, you know, I, I don't want to be divisive, but. Does it help us understand where something's coming from? And I don't know. I mean, I'm not. I don't have the answer to this one. I like it the way it is. I'm good with it the way it is. Unless somebody isn't. I can go either way. I just really want so to. So is, is everybody question. okay with leaving it alone? Then we were. Okay, we're gonna leave it alone, Matt. We're moving on. So Carrie's got a list of eight. Nine. So everybody's okay with the, the factors. I mean, I don't think anybody had a problem with that question last time. I think it was just there was you had you gave us a lot more options. You know, I was last time you had from like a four, comments. right? You know, they were asking questions about international um, baccalaureate program. They were asking about um, merging classes and combining classes. That was another topic. Also about pre-kindergarten programs. What we're talking about in Dover, um, full day versus half day. So. You know, these were topics that people were talking about at one of the meetings about a month ago. Questions from parents in the audience about, you know, this is important to us. Is this going to be a consideration of the new school district? So this would seem like a you know, consideration in figuring out the programming and figuring out the budget and, you know, what we offer to the students and the parents in each building. So. Anybody from the board, any comments? <coughs> that individuality question is, I wonder if that should be phrased differently. Yes, I have a note on that. I had a suggestion. But anything else from the board? No, hang on. Okay. Get to Anita first, I'll go to you. My question is, which factors are most important to you? So reading the first half of the question, I would just circle some, you know, circle the little A or the little G or whatever. But then the second half of your question says rate, but it doesn't give me a little line to write one, two, and three. Or maybe that top thing should not say rate your importance, but pick your top three. So and you know, then my, my suggestion was going to be not have letters, but just have a line and, and ask them to, you know, go one through one through eight or right so i nine. just think the the graphics need a little yeah. bit of tweaking because I'm more, of a, I'm more of the substance of the questions because the next part is that i am not the technology person to make this into you know the survey i'm hoping that there's going to be someone else so to i i, uh, I just yeah <laughs> i'm just I'm, I'm agreeing with you anita i think we can yeah. work on that but i was okay. going to hold my stuff until i let everybody else mark uh just verbiage um 
Which one is it? C? Yeah. C. Um, you may want to change the word maintaining to honoring because maintaining kind of implies it's what you're doing, what you're mm -hmm. going to do, whereas honoring kind of leaves it open to not committing yourself. We got, and there's a couple, we, some other words came up with valuing or respecting. Yeah, I think right. respecting, personally, valuing, valuing, I think, can be a divisive, a divisive word. So, is there any other comments from anybody else? Is that you? That was, I don't think it was me. Um, okay, let's go to the first thing. So, if we're okay with the question, and I like the idea of ranking, because it gives us some, some feedback. It gives us more feedback than, you know, and sometimes I, I've done these where you, like, look at it and say, boy, I wish I could circle three of them or four of them. But then you don't know, is, are they just circling one because they want it in there or not? So if we just ask them to rank them one through, yeah. one through eight, yeah. <clears throat> and then I just think other factors, you know, we just need to put a line under it, behind it. Would everybody be okay with that? And I think that covers Anita's issue. Yep. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm wondering, from based on the first question, getting back to this one, so you've got the IB program in Dover, so really anyone who in Wardsboro may not well, they may, but uh, that's kind of more specific to, to, to the town, um, so that may be get skewed a little bit. Since well, and it, and it could, but I think that will tell us something too, because there may be some parents and. But it goes back to what uh, you know Laura was saying, and so you know, Dover's may put that all first, but the Wardsboro will put that last because they so that will just balance. Okay, so out. let's not worry about the specific questions. Okay. Let's worry. Let's talk about. Do we want to do a ranking? Oh, definitely do a rank. Okay, it just becomes a tabulation <laughs> nightmare, though. Hmm? It becomes yes. a tabulation nightmare. Well, I don't think it'll be that no. bad because you just no. you just put all you know you had twelve number ones and you know. And hopefully, most of it's going to be done online. Yeah, like yeah. in a survey. Okay, yeah. good. If as long as yeah. you don't yeah. see this problem. Okay, so we're okay with the ranking. Let's and that kind of covered what Mark was bringing up. Let's go to specific questions. So let's go through each one of them. So let's start with A. Um, Carrie, expanding educational opportunities for Wardsboro Dover children. Good with that? I am. That seems okay. like that's one of our purposes. Of mm -hmm. Is everybody good with that? Any? Yes? I, I would just make it our, our district children. Take the Wardsboro and Dover make out. Make it to us. Yeah. Or just children. Right. Or just children, yeah. yeah so for students. Good. For yeah, students. students. For students. students is a better word. Okay, good. Are you going to make notes on this? Okay. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. B, finding cost savings through shared services between the, how about if we just put school between buildings. the school buildings again? Yeah, towns or school buildings. School buildings. Just get the names yeah. out of there. Everybody okay with that question then? Go ahead. When I read that as like a non-school-ish person, and I read cost savings through shared services between staff. Yeah. If I was not in the know, I would not know what you meant. Only because I've listened to the whole Act 46 discussions do I know what you mean by sharing staff. So that might put some people off or get them all a little Jones. What do you mean sharing staff? You know, like. Could we just leave it at services and then take off the rest? Exactly, was my proposal. Thank you. Finding, finding cost savings through, through shared services. Yep. Between the Wardsboro Dover School. No, between school buildings. This is the stop at the end of services. Yeah, because it's not just buildings. We're not services. Right. Covering everything. Yeah. General. Yeah. And it makes it a little shorter. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Is everybody okay with that? <laughs> yes. Control safe. Oh, are you fixing it as we yeah. go? I'll fix yeah. it as oh. you go and I'll say Terry, you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is the one I think Mark, you brought up. Um, maintaining the inv individuality of each program at Wardsboro and Dover. Honoring? I like that suggestion of honoring the individual. But then it's a pretty dis divisive if you're saying. We're taking so all the other references out to the two main, schools. Maintaining is likely not possible. So, you know, Culture. not, you know, if you say maintain, we'll get it kind of means nothing's right. going to change. Mm -hmm. 
And so that's Things are probably change. not possible, like that, that nothing is going to change. And so Something I think we need to be careful that we don't set an expectation that nothing is going to change. Yes, ma'am. In the Act 46 discussions, when the principals did their presentations, there was a lot of language being used about school culture. And so maybe that question is, as Mark suggested, yeah. respecting honoring each school's culture. culture. Well, I think somebody said honoring. I like well, that. I think Mark said honoring. Right? Is yeah. that? Well, I say honoring and culture. Those, those two words yeah, together, I think. Culture was a word y'all used a lot yeah. during the Act 46 conversations. So, Carrie, you got a suggestion? I mean, honoring the individuality of each, of the culture at each, you know, I don't know if you want to continue to not use Wardsboro and Dover, individual. At each community. Did you say at, at each, uh, for each, each on, yeah, there we go. How about honoring the individual of each community? Yes. Or any, yeah. Right. Say that again? The individuality of each community. Put in culture because you're really trying you, you're oh, trying to, to make it culture. one district. So it's well, honoring yeah, the honoring culture. the culture of each community. Yeah, that sounds to me that's, that's is everybody okay with that? I, I don't think I would know what that means. I don't know what that means. Yeah. Well, oh, what uh, people, uh, people may not know what individuality. Well, means. so I, I think awesome. you know Dover. You, you tell people I live in Dover. They say, Dover, where the heck is that? You go, you know where Mount Snow? Oh, yeah, you live in Mount Snow. <laughs> well, no, I don't live at Mount Snow. But you say, I live in Wardsboro, and people know Wardsboro. So, you know, I think the individual, to me, the honoring the culture of each community is, you know, Dover's always been a ski town. You know, Wardsboro's always been more of a community, you know. Been what? I said Wardsboro's a ski town. Not really. You don't, you don't see Ward. I've never, when we were growing up, we always saw Dover as something totally different, a whole different beast. But like Wardsboro, New Fane, and towns that we were, all, it's, you know, we were communities, and Wardsboro was where all the second homeowners lived. You mean Dover? Pardon? You mean Dover? Do I'm sorry, Dover, yeah. You know, Dover and Stratton, you know, you, you went there to like go to adventure in foreign lands. You just go count license plates and see who can get the most out of state plates. I think um, parents will know what you mean with that honoring the culture. Basically, it, that's like code. They'll know what you mean. But and I also think it has to do with the communities too. One of the things that people were very concerned about was, you know, a school is is really the community. A lot of the community is is involving around the school. So I think. Yeah. So somebody make a suggestion so we can because we we got time but not all night. I think it's good. See, I'm just trying to think of a different word than culture, but I can't think of anything. And do we mean the community, or do we mean really the community Climate in each culture. school? Well, I think it's the whole thing. I think it's, it's colder thing. here than okay. there. It's the community. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Good point. Good point. What's that? Uh, I was just saying, we often say in education, the climate and culture. But then, is that literally looking for the climate, like the weather? Yeah, right. So I think culture. I, I, I hope I, people I, would know I, better I, than I, that. But. So what are we fine with? Honoring the culture of each community. community. Okay. Yeah. And then so, striking, maintaining the individuality of each program at Wardsboro and Dover. Right, right. So the new C is honoring the culture. Mm -hmm. Okay, so go to D. Interna international baccalaureate currently at Dover. Well, it actually currently is in Dover. Could we just take off the currently at Dover and just yeah. leave it at the sure. so yeah, program? That. Yeah. That was easy. Yeah, well, that sure was easy. Would know what that was. Well, and if they don't, then it's not yeah, very important to them to rank well, it low. That's true. That's true. But it may also be that that people in Wardsboro want to bring it here. Right. Well, exactly. Or they want it. Right. They'll look. Yeah, they that's know right. about it. If it's so. overwhelming, or be able to have access to it. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, that's good. Depending on what line is in. Pre-kindergarten programs for three to five-year-olds, whether full day or half day. I think that's pretty good as it is. Everybody good? Good. Every school would, program. Oh, go ahead. Or just take out the word weather um, and in parentheses put full day or half day. Because you're not asking whether people want full day or half day. You're just saying we've got those two programs. Do you want pre K that happens to be these two things? Either or. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's, there's also the question of 
Well, could we could we split the question too, and could we do could we do want? Yeah, full day preschool or half day preschool, and see where they rank, and that may help the administration get some more. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you have a whole bunch more people wanting the half day program and not the full day, and that would you know make our lives change change what we recommend. It starts to get a little complicated though when you're talking about a separate three year old and four year old program. I mean, how I, I how, how much detail do you want to get? We just okay. leave it as preschool. Okay. Yeah. Bill. Hey. Uh, Hang on, Bill. <laughs> <One> <laughs> job. Bill. Okay. Uh, well, you could say, uh, you know, pre-kindergarten program, full day, pre-kindergarten program, half day, three-year-old program. It would break That's it out. Into three questions. Because the way it's written now, it's just merged all around. Mm -hmm. I think the problem with doing that is you can have people that have different age kids at that moment in time choosing Could be true. the most important rather than the concept of pre-K. Just do well, a I general conceptual pre-K. Yeah. I would pre think so. Pre-K is, is almost a requirement. There's not, not going to be pre-K. I would just go half day, full day. Yeah, I, I think if you Two. split up the half day, full day, Pre-K, half day, pre-K, full day. And I think that can give us, again, we're not going to answer every question. And I remember Marlboro did their their um, their survey with this Act 46 stuff. And, I mean, they were, they, they, I think they got lost with the numbers because they were trying to get such specifics. Mm -hmm. So I think we just talked, yeah, Matt? Do you want to take off the three to five year olds? Well, we're still talking about okay. it. So. So if we were to just do full day pre-K and half day pre-K, right? Everybody's good with that? So it would be two questions. Yeah, like you have it. Just take off take off the three to five-year-olds. Everybody okay with those? Cool, let's move on. The laughter. After school programs such as <coughs> laughter. I mean, pretty much stands on its own. Is that what words for <coughs> I noticed the sign outside? Yeah. Okay. Laughter is an apostrophe. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely, yeah. Right. And then providing transportation for secondary students. Mm -hmm. I should. That one's good. It's vague. It's good. You know, I just, it's, so could you have? Would you make it more specific? Well, I don't think anyone would be opposed to that, but just a matter of their importance. Because we're just asking for the importance. So, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you know what? So let me go here. We know that we're going to provide transportation for secondary students somewhere. Right. So. Do we do we want to get in the ticky weed zone and start going more specific, or is that maybe just is that maybe just a, a wasted mm -hmm. question? Right. So because everybody's going to want transport secondary transportation right. at least somewhere. Right. We're not going to do away with all secondary. Not have any answers until we start really right. that out anyway. Can everybody agree to that? And then we'll pull that question and then. That way, there's more weight being given, and, and it's more yeah, important. Yeah, I would agree. It's, it's everyone's going to want to fish. It's not really so. You okay with that, Terry? I am. I mean, these these are questions that people are asking. I mean, if we were to put, you know, maybe we could. I mean, again, you're getting down. We may want to do a follow-up survey down the road with right. more details. Mm -hmm. Like when we're talking about transportation, right. we could do something specific on okay here are the schools that we have students going to from both here are where all our students go boom, boom 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 these are all the schools which one would you like to see transportation to or something but i agree i think you could leave it in there to multiple destinations i guess if you wanted to yeah so we'll, let's do away with that is that okay gone matt okay not combining <coughs> grades, individual grades regardless of class size. That ain't gonna fly. How about class sizes? Go ahead. I would take off the negative and just have it say 
individual <coughs> class per grade, regardless of size. Take off the negative. Individual Four. class. Individual class per grade, regardless of size, would be my proposal. So that doesn't currently exist here. No, I know. So she just made a suggestion. Laura, you yeah, had a comment? I think I would just put uh, class sizes or mm -hmm. um, average class size or, I don't know, um, <coughs> figuration of class. I don't think you want to use the word regardless. The you know, there's some things that, you know, sometimes you ask a question, you know, if we if you ask a question, you give people an indication that it's awesome. that there's, you know, there's something, there's a lot of, you know, room. We can do there. whatever we want to do. Yeah, there's a lot of room there. And, and with regard to, you know, like maintaining individual class sizes, um, I mean, I feel like that's a, that's a, you know, year by year, I mean, building by building, that's a bigger question than popularity of people say, you know, if enough people say, keep the individual class sizes, that's what we do, you know? Yeah, then that's you have that year where you have two students in both buildings that are in first grade, you know? We could say something about, you know, maintaining, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, what do we, what do, what, what do we want people to tell us here? That's, I guess, well, maybe. So I'll go what do we to, want them to I'll tell go us? to Dover, where, you know, our administrators set up the program that we're currently trying to operate under was individual classes yep. at the pro at yep. the younger level when, no matter what the size, because of the learning opportunities. Yep. And that was important to us as a board yep. for several years, but now we we felt comfortable. A decade. Yeah, over a decade, probably yeah. 15 years, that we've now felt comfortable allowing some combined grades for specific reasons, like emergency situations. Yeah, like that would be the only reason. <clears throat> yeah. What do we want? What do we want people to tell us? What do we want them to tell us? So okay. the only thing you're going to get from that is how important it is in the ranking of the other things, of the other items. But that's really, that's, that's always going to be more, not so much our decision, as it's more of an administrative decision. We've always left classes and configuration to the administration. They make a recommendation. And I think that's more, that's more uh, up their alley. I would almost say you break. I, I want to push on that because we do have a policy, right? I mean, yeah. well, I mean, it's a board Kind it's of a direction, board driven direction, direction. It's not right? a policy. Um, you know, I mean, so like that general direction of trying to maintain individual classes in the lower grades was something that we had decided. You know, do we, I mean, but is that uh, well, what we... Well, so what I was going to suggest is do we want to break that off into a separate question and just ask what do you see as the optimal class size no. and give them like three ranges? I think that's a dangerous oh, question to ask. Yeah, to ask I, I don't know what's in particular. Rick, give us your input, please. My input on individual class sizes? Yeah. I mean, I feel like we have let students roam from class to class, haven't we, Tammy, when we needed to? If student yes. excels at something, we have to go up to another classroom. I just don't think grouping kids by age as opposed to ability is necessarily something that we want to well there you go up. is is class sizing uh, is, is grade assignment by age versus ability you want to throw something like that in there that's what the state's doing now anyway aren't they well in your individual learning plans or, yeah right. they should be but some people may you know there's the tr hang on one second there's some real traditionalists that because you know when i went to school it was First grade when you were five years old, or sitting, you know, you run into that. So I don't know. This boss. Can I ask Hill a question? Yeah. Sure. Hill can't answer though until we tell him. <laughs> Jeez. Does that question belong on here at all, or should that really be left up to the administration? Uh, well, I mean, I think it goes back to what everybody's asking on the board right now: is what are you trying to get at? Are you trying to get at the point of how valued? a certain configuration of grades are 
because you have two separate buildings that are um, going to have the same governance structure and have uh, operate in uh, a different fashion as of right now. You know, I mean, it, it, at Wardsboro, every grade is combined. And at Dover last year, every grade was not combined. Um, and Dover only combined a grade this year because of a um, emergency situation. So, I don't know. I, I, I go back to what Laura said. What are you trying to find out with this question? And then I would answer your question. First, I, I, I would want to know, what, what does the board want to know? I don't want to know anything, so let's get rid of the question. <laughs> I kind of want to get rid of the question at this point, because let's I feel like this is question. something we need add. to deal with the yeah. administration and yeah. hear their recommendations on how to answer the question. Yeah, I mean, we're asking people to make a decision on something. We, I mean, we've got nothing to give them. Do you know what I mean? Like, do you want, it's kind of like, do you want things to stay the way they are? We've already kind of mixed that. I'm not, like, it's something, I, and I'd like to know about the, like, a kind of a flexibility of uh, whether to move within the grades and also the flexibility to move within schools. So I think I don't, you know, that's something we need to know. People are how interested they are about having the abilities to move, to move amongst the grades and the ability to move amongst the schools. So that's something I'm interested to know. If yes. People want to see. But this is more of a backwards question, which is why we need to strike it, I think. Backwards. Right. No, I would agree. Yeah, you're agree. six years old and you're in this grade. Yeah. And that's and the way I'm it We're going to have one teacher in that classroom. I, I don't think that's the direction we're than moving than in. Just to serve the South at this point. Right. And that's what the state is pushing now for the, what, what are we calling that again? The uh, IEP. education. Thank you. Individual education. So that, I mean, I am interested to see how parents are responding to that. So if we can somehow in a roundabout way ask that question, I think it would be a good idea. But uh, I don't know if this is the spot for it. So I tell you what, if nobody has a problem, let's pull that one, Matt. I think we've pretty much gotten there. Okay. I was curious if there's something else in the Wardsboro particular that you want to I don't know about because I'm not a parent of a Wardsboro student that I didn't think of. And these were, this is really from hearing from comments from the parents that have been coming to the meetings. So. Well, I mean, Tammy and I were just kind of talking about it. I mean, Wardsboro uh, is engaged. They're just at the beginning. They're about four months into a really um, high caliber nationwide action research study that's going to um, have a fundamental effect on the delivery of. Uh, literacy and math instruction at the early grades um, as a model for not only uh, our supervisor union but Vermont and the country and um, so they're just getting into that but that is so the parents don't know that it's happening or going on but it's definitely something that's going to be highly valued um, to a lot of us um, if you put that in there nobody's going to know what exactly that's what we were just talking about right uh, one thing is we are a, a PBIS school, a positive behavior support school. I'm not sure if that's something that parents value or not. Well, let's let's throw that in there because I like that. People of Wardsboro, it would be interesting because, you know, a percentage of Wardsboro parents are going to be filling this out. And if nobody answers that one, then it maybe wasn't as big a deal. If, if you get a big, big answer on that one, then but I think you got to spell it out. Yeah. That's good. This is a spelling place. This is a weird angle. Mm -hmm. It's a small keyboard, too. So this will be something that the Wardsboro families are familiar with and Dover families may so Matt, not be. So can you take away the letters then and just put lines there? And then we just need no. to put a little note underneath, you know, please. For your bullets. Oh, yeah. Your ABCD. Yeah. And you then to, just, you know, rank them one through. Well, if you just change your bullet format. So can we just establish that this is a digital online survey 
primarily? No, it's going to be every. It has to be everything. We we wanted to have it available at meetings in paper copy. We wanted it available online. We wanted to go on the, our blog site. <laughs> on the blog site, it's going to be. There should be a thing for customers. We do you want it. Yeah, the blog site just linked to right. the, the survey. survey monkey. Yeah, but what you do want to do is you want to you want to create your paper survey based on the online survey, yeah. so that it looks similarly. Otherwise, you're actually asking for. Okay, so guys, listen. It's now 20 after eight. Okay, we got vision work to do too, and we have an executive session. So I don't want to be here all night. So can we? Let's work on the survey, and then let's take our administrator and get him, and give him the job of getting it out there. And however, we need to get it out there, so that. I mean, we've talked about it. We beat it up. We want to get it out to as many people as we can, which means it can't only be digital. It's going to require paper. It's going to have to go out however we can yeah. go out. Yeah. And we'll just charge Bill with doing that. We can spend hours talking about it. but um, I think, yeah. <laughs> so maybe maybe not charging Bill. You were a member of your staff. Maybe charging, no, charging our administrator. That's what he's here for. Why wouldn't we charge <clears> Bill <throat> with that? I, <laughs> okay. But when we have volunteers who, you know, Offer to okay. Well, Bill together. wants to participate with the volunteers. He can, but I don't. Yeah. I, you know, we can't assign it to a volunteer. We, Bill sure. is Bill is the only paid staff that we have for River Valleys, so we're going to give it to Bill. And then Bill, I'm sure, is not going to do it himself. I'm sure Bill has people that work for him, and he'll take care of it. I, don't, I mean, I don't want to be short, but we we got to get moving, Simple. or we're not going to get anything done. So let's go to the next question. Question three, how do you see each school operating as newly formed River Valley's Unified School? Continue to operate as each school individually as before the creation of this new district despite having no budget to work from. Operating as one school, two different campus sites or something in between. I think we get rid of the question. Hmm. We can, but there are a lot of people asking that question. What did you just I, I, think so, you're, I think you're going to get a, um, almost everybody's going to say A. Yeah. And, and Change that's, is hard. that's not possible. I mean, it's, no, exactly. it, it's not going to happen. So, uh, any other comments? I mean, we're kind of redoing the Act 46 process Study. here. Right. right. We're, we're, we're reopening, and I don't... Okay. I, I'd like to see that one struck, I guess, so... Number four, what do you think the name of the school should be starting? I think that's a little premature. Oh. I, I don't, you know, it's going to be plenty of time, and I think that's something we can deal with when we start to see where we're headed with what we're going to have. I mean, if you're asking, if you're doing a survey, and this is a question that you might ask later, I mean, you know, why not include it? And then I would say change uh, C to, you know, put a committee together rather than what ideas do you have. I mean, we could pull it out. I, you know, it's not going to make it, to, it's not going to, it's nothing that we're going to give to yeah. our administrator to work on. What we're trying to do is we're coming up with a survey to help our administrator to form a school. I don't think that is as important. I think that can be something done later. I, Bill doesn't care what it's called. You can call it, I think, any, you know, you, you can make up a name. I mean, it's got a name. It's the River Valley Unified School District. Um, that's the official name. I think that doesn't, you know, to, to move it on, I think we get something that can come up when we have more discussions, we can get more public, and we can see what it's going to look like. So if we're okay with that, let's move on to five. What, are the, what criteria other than a home residence would you like the River Valley Unified School District consider in establishing a policy for the designated school building a student will attend. And then there's one, two, three, five of them. Um, again, I think just to move it along a little, I, I'd like to see that maybe as a rank two. I think it's a really good question. And I really like the, I think there's some good responses here, but if we, it gave it a ranking two, I think that would help us. I do too. I, with the I would, policy, I'd like to take out D because presumably um, parent or caregiver's choice will be like number one for everybody. We're not even going to be entering that question right. unless right. that's what they want. Yeah. <coughs> I 
regards to that D, that's really giving the opportunity to say, you know, we how, how much weight should you give to that, I think, right. is what we're asking. There's a particular teacher. I mean, you don't know because they're giving you staff. Well, D or there's e. a particular teacher there D. that I want to go to, and that teacher is in Morrisboro. I live in Dover, but I still want to. I want to. Well, that, but I mean, isn't that the whole, isn't that like the whole start? So that's where everybody, I feel like, is going to start from. Right. And then the question is, what should we? What should our policy? When you start from that place, mm -hmm. where you want, you know, where you want a choice, what do you want our policy to reflect in terms of how you are able to mm -hmm. get that? I mean, we have like the great advancement policy or retention policies. I think Wardsboro is pretty similar to Dover. You know, it says that the the administration gets to make that decision, but the administrator administrator needs to consider a you know um, the parents wishes you know the teachers recommendations the assessments and he's got a whole list of things I, I think I, I think that you know the parents choice is something that would be considered I don't know I, I think it would be interesting to see how how much weight people want to add to that so I don't mind leaving it in there um, is the heart of this question maybe saying um, what criteria would you like the board to consider when developing yes. a school choice policy? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then r have them rank those things. Right. That's, that's I mean, that's kind of what no, you're that's saying. that's where right? we're at. No, but I mean, to phrase it in that way. Yeah, no, that's what we wanted. Okay. I, I think now we're just going, our, do we want to have those five in there? There's a, a discussion of poll number D or letter D. I, I'd be interested to see um, if anything other than D was listed as like number one. I, I mean, that to me seems like the place that everybody would start. Yeah, I agree. I just, um, maybe not. I I mean, mean, maybe not. Maybe not. I, maybe maybe well, taxpayers all, would say that should be the last thing that's. Choice. Right. I mean, they're all a choice. Right. You're making a choice because of class size. You're yeah. making a choice right. because of a special program. Right. You're really just talking about developing a class, a, a school choice policy. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's why. I mean. Which is why we would take out D because you don't need a policy unless so the parents the, uh, or caregivers want the choice. Okay. And then I, I just any other comments on any of the other ones? We'll just have the four. Yeah. So I just I I don't want to see on the last one. I think a desired teacher. I mean that that gets into staff and personnel <coughs> issues, and we don't want to be involved in that. And and that yeah. can't be a decision. So I think that. Yeah. I think a particular building, and we leave it at that. Yeah. Hang on a second. Let's. I would agree. I don't. I mean. Oh, anybody know what? Two quick things. Last time you had briefly mentioned trying to put in some kind of an aspirational question, and did you want to include a, a communications question? How do we best get info about what's going on to you? I well, I think yeah. that's in there. It is. is that? Yeah. Yeah. I don't have the it's whole number thing. number seven. Oh, I don't have Just the whole thing. Tight. Got it. Thank you. Okay, so number five now. We only have four choices. Yes, ma'am. Just a couple of clarifying questions on this last one. Yeah. Are we taking out or desired teacher? Right. For sure. And are we taking this out, which was part of Bill's recommendation? That was Bill's recommendation? Oh, well, so other than a home residence. It did not include that part. Silly little, I think Bill's question was generally rewording. Bill changed this making word. It, yeah, making it less wordy, the actual question yeah. itself. So it's not automatic. If you live in Orangeboro, you go to Orangeboro. Well, that's a very I think that's well. That's what the question. hold on, guys. That's what the articles say. The, the I'm pretty sure the articles say you go to the the building in your town that you're a resident in, and that the board is to come up with a policy that will allow you to to move around. So, the, so, so we're trying to ask for this question: Is what our policy is going to be essentially? Right. So what is going to be important in that policy? And what criteria should be used? So. Yeah, I think it's fine. So do you want to take home residence? I'd leave it out or leave it? No, I'd, I'd leave, leave it out. Because it's, Cause that's it's where emphasizing the, the, that's, the that's, agreed upon reality. Right. Is that that's where you're going to go 
but there will be a policy that will allow some movement and what criteria should be in that policy. Could you replace for the designated school building with which building? Sure. It's going to lose half your audience with that phrase. <laughs> which policy for which buildings? Um, but you'll you'll come up with that. <laughs> I, yeah, I know. I'm just. I would not recommend the board to ever develop a, a school choice policy that wasn't based on equity, and that followed the school right. choice yeah. policy nine through twelve, which is established in law. And so there would have to be a process for a lottery. So it doesn't make any difference what the class size is, or if there's a special program, or if there's proximity. <laughs> You can't favor Barry because Barry works at Bill's uh, tow truck shop next to Dover School, and Dwight's doesn't work there, and Dwight wants to send his kid there, and uh, Tammy lives next to Wardsboro. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get into a real equity challenge. Well, then, how about this, guys? This is going to take a little bit more discussion. We did, yeah. We're not, Bill's not going to do the choice policy. That's a policy, so we have to decide that. Exactly. So why don't we take this question out and we'll, we'll come up, we'll, we'll have to form a, a yeah. study group or a learning group. And then I think let's keep this somewhere because I think it would be good to have during the discussion. You're going to have a school choice policy. Right. We have to, and that's on us. But I, I think you might give some false hope to people. And, and we, were, we also mm -hmm. talked about the school policy, choice policy being done while you're doing the what the building's going to look like over the summer. Mm -hmm. So let's pull this. And well, which criteria is acceptable for? Election? Well, I would want to Definitely. research it. I would look at the law, and I would then tell you guys, and then you guys would develop a policy. Right. But I think if we just come up with criteria right now. No, I'm now, saying if we knew what, yeah, if we knew what. But the, the remember, the this village. is the I'm sorry. This is the stuff that was in the. This was stuff the state said was okay, that is in our articles. I would just want to check it <coughs> before we asked it. Because remember, yeah, we yeah, had yeah, it was this in the stuff articles. So we had you know, siblings. We need to make a policy based on, and this was stuff that was. Kind yeah, of I hear what you're saying. It's so, be illegal, but yeah, let's was, let's, so let's call question, it for wait, now. Wait. Well, I think we just pull it for now, okay. and then we'll have to do a little research in that because that's not important to give to Bill to to figure out what we're going to have for a bill for for school system. I still like to see it though in in the in the survey, but just with those I, items that are again, we're trying <laughs> to make a survey that we can give to our administrator mm -hmm. to help guide him to bring to us something you know fairly quickly here. So I think if we make it more, if we take that out, we I think we hold on to it. That we're going to use it somewhere down the road, but it's not. Bill doesn't need that to decide what he's going to do for a school system. Mm -hmm. He does need to know some other stuff, and let's focus on the stuff that he needs to know. And if we keep it short and sweet, remember Carrie's original survey had five questions. Carrie, four. About that. Five. You know, we added some more, so let's, if people question, say, why don't you have something about that in there? The answer is because we're going to deal with that down the road. Yeah. Just uh, when you were talking about, isn't this in our articles? It's Article 16, right. School Attendance and Enrollment, and it talks about Those um, setting up, right, right. interdistrict choice to the families. So, again, that's something Bill said he'd like to look at. We're going to have some time when we aren't going to have to be as pressed because we've got to get something to him in the next few months, couple months, so that we can, you know, have him start his work. And so let's let's take this out if nobody has a problem with that. Is everybody okay with that? At least the board is okay with it. Dwight, once I get the parameters, you know, you guys can craft the policy. Right. I just don't want. Well, and we get that's our well, job. I don't want people to think that they're going to get something they might not get. I, I agree with you. I just I'd like to. Still like some feedback on that. Oh, question. absolutely. So, but we'll get it somewhere else. I'll give you some models that have been no, used already. No, no. Yeah. So the next question about transportation, again, that's kind of a subcommittee or a, or a learning group. group. 
you know, that so this might be another question where you want to take it out of the survey. Yeah, but this was something that you know we wanted feedback of figuring out. Right, and it's something we're we're gonna we we're gonna do the transportation and school attendance one while Bill's doing his work. So if yeah, let's pull that out. Let's not lose it, but let's keep it because we it's a good question we can use. You know, if we did ranking and stuff. Mm -hmm. Now let me just ask one quick thing of you, Bill. When you're building a school for us, is how the transportation going to be working for the elementary level, like for field trips and stuff? Is that something you're going to need, or will that? Um, I think there'll be time during the process to be able to ask some clarifying questions of the group. Okay. I don't think that needs to be pre-answered now. So I love question number seven. One? Yeah, this is a good question. This is a good question. To share information with you and rate you and rate your preference. So again, I think we do we do away with the letters mm -hmm. and just put so attending a meeting. You know that, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's not suppose. <laughs> You want to add that? Uh, yeah. Personal invitations so. meetings? Yeah. We're not doing personal invitations. <laughs> I mean, we're going to have meetings anyway. Yeah, yes. but that may be their preferred method right. of, uh, of So this is kind of thinking, besides meetings, because we're always going to have meetings, what other right. means of oh, communication? Because okay. right. it's not like we're going to get rid of a meeting. No, <laughs> no I'm not I, mean, I think putting it there kind of puts it in their face, though. Exactly. <laughs> I, yeah, but then sometimes you get a slap back <laughs> fast. <laughs> Because we get conditional. If you cannot attend our meetings, <laughs> what? Oh, oh, right. That makes them feel even worse. Are you okay with no. that? Change your point. Well, that's fine. I just that's why I didn't put meetings because uh, we're we're going to have meetings regardless of right. whether or not people attend. Uh, so. So, it'd be interesting if like. Watching meetings through BCTV comes out last. Nobody <laughs> wants it. Does that mean we won't do that anymore? No, I like Aww. the recording. Yeah. Why no? It's nice to go back. So, does anybody want to change anything else there? Is everybody okay with that? Posters is the only thing I've been doing a lot of that's missing. Yeah, and I like those posters. People, I've heard some comments so. Do you mind if we add posters? Not at all. Posters on bulletin boards. Posters distributed to the towns. Yeah, I send out, I think, 15 of them each time. Yes, sir. I think social media is a dangerous one because now, <coughs> now you're talking about, okay, are you on Facebook? Are you on Twitter? Are you on Instagram? Are you going to be doing all of them? I think it's dangerous. What, what's the front porch that we used to do? Front porch. Form. Front porch. She still does it. She doesn't. It, but is that it. social media? Not really. Uh, it's more like a bulletin board posting kind of thing. People don't interact and comment yeah. and. So we could just change that to internet bulletins and internet. I, I, I don't know. I think people are waiting for the Facebook thing. And you're not going to get it. Well, keep not at my rate. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, we talked about it in both groups, and it's just too. Right. You know, it, Facebook requires instant, immediate satisfaction. Mm -hmm. I mean, people want an answer, and we talked about that. Yeah. And, and I don't yeah. Facebook, well, so. I mean, Facebook's you know, really for interactivity. If you're talking about pushing out announcements, that's Twitter. Um, but again, you're talking about who's on what social network. So, well, the president yeah. gets in trouble with Twitter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why don't we just do uh, you know, um, a website and blog site? Like Twitter? <coughs> Twitter, you're tweeting? <laughs> you have a picture so of a bird on there. You I will tweet. tell you that um, I have seen, so I've seen one at uh, Twin Valley, which says we were, were not interacting. I don't know that that's necessarily great, but it's a place for dissemination. Tweeting is a place to disseminate. I know. Um, I mean, the different platforms have very different purposes. Yeah. Right. It's up to you folks. I mean, I'm like not a website. Social media. See a website up there. So, 
So maybe instead of social media sites, the think, website. I think website. Um, you yeah. know what you could do? We could do. Yeah, I saw that. Um, on our blog site, you can probably <laughs> set up our blog site to automatically post to a social media site. You could have, I mean, so it could just be a dead kind of just, we're just feeding information. Yeah, well, the blog is set up so no comments are allowed because typically a blog has a comment section and those comments can be either moderated or not moderated. So you have layers. Yeah. So I've designed these pages so that comments are not allowed, moderated or otherwise. The blog could also automatically, so when you update, it could automatically right. post. Right, it would automatically post to the Twitter. platform of my choice. But again, people have the expectation, as Mike says, on social media, no, that true. they can write so something true. and that yeah. somebody else can write something and that somebody will answer somebody saying something. Maybe we should just take it off. That's the expectation. Matt, you could be our official Twitter. Uh, website on there. Or you could be the tweeter. Yeah. Oh my but if people, tweeter in chief, tweeter in chief. You're fired. If you're people fired. are uninformed because you refuse to, or because you find it unpractical to use social media, then then you're not interacting with them the way they want to be interacted with. So, so I get if, it. So should we put in their personal visitation by board members? <laughs> because maybe that's how some people want to be. Nice. I mean, we're not going to interact with everybody the way they want to be interacted with. Some of this is some people. If you're if you're interested, you're concerned. You have students. You need to go and do a little, put a little effort into it, and get out there and see it. And I, you know, we talked about all these other sites, and every, you know, the majority of the people have disagreed with it. But I mean, it's it's, it's up to the, you guys. I mean, we, just because we put it there doesn't mean we're gonna do it. But if we put it there and everybody picks. You know, have a Facebook page is number well, one. It's good information for us to have, Richard. If they, so you know, if they do, right, then do we do it? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, we maybe we talk about how can we do it. Mm -hmm. right? Just leave it in there as social so media about, blogs how about if we put and get Facebook the, out of there. Yeah, don't yeah. Don't don't, spe okay. don't specify say social the actual media slash blog social blog media. Blog slash website. Right, right, can right. we do do non whatever you just called it? No, it's not. It, whatever, so whatever we put just out. Want to have a static page, right? Thank you. So that you, there's no, there's not going to be any interaction with the page other than you can go see it. You can I, post your mail. You, 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 you used to be able to set up Facebook, so I think so. You without comments, also. So the comments aren't public; they're just private. Private, yeah. Pages, but, they, but it's still. It wouldn't be but fueling if, a if fire. If I make a private comment, I'm going to expect somebody to respond. But whoever is a part of the group is still. They can still interact. Is it still able to group. comment? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You can make it private in the sense that you join a group. So okay. people going to the site would see a splash page, so called, you could have and then there'd be a comments. thing join the group. And so the comments would yeah. stay within the group, but they'd still expect. I think you can have a public page and have to approve comments. Um, I don't think on Facebook you can moderate comments. Okay. On blog sites you can. So everybody pretty much agrees that there should be. We should call it some type of social, social, yeah. social media. Yeah. You just put online, period. Just take that all off and just put online. And that way we'll, well figure it out then later. Online is, no, is social media is good. So we, somebody tell me what online. you want to see. Rick, what do you want to see there? Do you have a replacement? Uh, yeah, I, I just think, I mean, you can just leave it in there with social media and blogs, I think is probably fine. I mean, what's the best way for the board to share information with you? I would change blogs to website. Yeah. Yeah, we had talked about um, getting a website with a uh, URL. I did email Kevin Burke on that. I didn't get back, hear back from him, so I'll bug him some more. Okay, so Rick, you're good with that? I'm good with that. Laura, Laura. Mm -hmm. Carrie? I'm totally Burke. satisfied. Totally satisfied. Wow. wow. This is just, you know, again, in general. <laughs> I'm loving it. Okay, good. And then we're gonna make it, we're gonna make it line so you can rank them. Yeah, we can't do it. Right. Like this. Okay. So the next question is, what achievement by the River Valley Unified School District Board would you want to see that would reflect a successful first year? This is kind of that um, ambitious achievement aspiration question. <coughs> so since this is somebody has to write something, can we make it maybe easier? How what? 
how, um, well, how would you measure success as a board? Meet their budget. <laughs> I'll measure success if we actually have a meeting end on time. <laughs> That's a guarantee. To get all our work yourself. done. I'm, I was thinking more like, you know, because to just kind of make the question a little easier, you know, what, how would you, what would you see or how would, what would it look like if we had a, a successful transition? What would a successful transition look like? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> look like to you. Right. Nailed it to right. Be prepared to read a lot. That's good. But that's fine that's because that's what Love we do. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, somebody may say, you know, that that all the kids are in one big happy family. Somebody might see, you know, test scores go up. Somebody mm -hmm. might, you know, mm -hmm. my child gets bused to Brattleboro High School. Who knows? Barry. Barry. The, mm -hmm. the sixth grade <coughs> goes to the Barry Auditorium mm -hmm. and wins. The basketball championship. Is everybody good, good with, with that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I think the last, the comments, uh, the paragraphs Carrie put at the end was really good. Because it kind of, again, we emphasize this one we meet. Mm -hmm. right, and I know people were concerned about the um, multiple submissions of yep. the survey. I, I just, I don't know. I don't see that really being an issue. I see the issue probably be more of people filling it out and getting it to us, not someone being rogue and then filling out a whole bunch of online, oh, a whole bunch of written. So I think the, the bigger question is, are we going to get some feedback back or people are going to follow through and do this once? Well, we made it real simple. I mean, it's five questions now, Matt. Right? Yeah, five questions, including the, the last one. Yeah. The essay question. You could. Yes. You could, uh, Go ahead. you could put one more line on there that just says, ask a question and see if anybody asks a question you forgot to ask. That's always a good question on a survey, which is what question did I forget to ask you? I'm okay with that. Are you guys okay with that? Sure. Bill, is that okay? You're set. I like that. Just ask a question in a line. That way it's an imperative. So, Bill, we just assigned you this job. So, Carrie's, in, Carrie's the board member to liaison with you. So, okay. if Carrie says it's good to go, then it's good to go. And when is the, uh, what is the goal for when the board would like this information? <coughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> I'll post it on the blog site as soon as I get it. Maybe Wednesday. <laughs> oh, as soon as we can. No, 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 I mean. When we want to share it with the public. Right, when do you want to share it with oh, I, I got that. I'll work with Carrie for Carrie to say, good. Did you want to have it potentially for the annual for next week? Well, no, I want them to hand out next week. Right, that's what I mean. Yeah. Is there so a deadline <coughs> <is there coughs> that needs to be in by? Yeah, town meeting. Oh, okay, you're right. Okay. So that we can also pass the matter around individual sure town meetings. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Carrie, I'll send you a draft. And then right. it'll actually and be out for almost a month. Distribution. Okay. Pretty good. It's there. Why can't we find Do it? Do you think that you will have it should be under the ability, you and your uh -huh. staff, to do a survey monkey to put this in Cree? Okay. Rich, I need to ask you a question. Yeah. Go ahead. Ten questions. Uh, did we approve January 30th? Okay. Can you just click right in front of it? Okay. Okay. No, we've we approved it. Hard copy. Exactly. Yeah. 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 We've not so approved it. Oh, I know. This might be. Website. Website. Hey guys, we gotta go back real quick. Can somebody make a motion to approve the January 30th meeting? Everybody's I also want to meeting minutes. Tell you, I have a note from Anita that she wasn't there that night, so I've taken her name off the list. Okay. So moved. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Rick seconded it. Oh, Jean. We got you taken care of. Huh. Is everybody any oh, discussion? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 As amended. Okay, so we're going to spend a few minutes on this vision. So here is dun, 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 dun. building vision statement. I think I got this better than last time. 
Rick's looking at the funny. No, 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 no. I spent a little time of reading about how to there's some vision stuff for you guys. So, <coughs> vision statements have several parts. They describe ideal characteristics the board strikes, strives to achieve, the board's commitment to their stakeholders, and the actions they will take to support their schools and communities. So, parameters, vision statements are focused on the student outcomes we wish to see, speak to the commitment of the board to the schools and communities, Allow for schools to do the work, i.e. building systems, sharing resources, providing professional development, establishing culture, and are short, no more than three or four sentences. But the parameters are how many sentences? Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> what does it look like when you are there? Based on the study <coughs> committee work, the River Valley Board work, public input, here are some examples under the three sections. So this is what we've talked about at different times. Engaged learning, focus on student outcomes. There's engaged learning, high quality instructions, and all students uh, demonstrate academic proficiency. So we need to kind of, those are the three things that we've all talked about at different times we've had these discussions. So that should be, we need to make a sentence. We're focused on student outcomes in, to, to hit those three topics. The board's commitment to the community and the school, the board works with the community, ensures sufficient resources to do the work. We all know what resources are. Um, board works with administration that needed resources are available. The board provides financial resources to support the school district to reach its goals. Taxpayers value the investment. Parents and community appreciate the climate and culture of the district, positive environment, and equity. And then how the board allows this work to happen by setting mission goals and policies while allowing administrators to work towards these board goals. So if we're supposed to have three or four sentences in a vision and the things that we want to talk about, the parameters are, you know, student outcomes, board's commitment, and how we allow it to happen, there's some guidelines, there's some, some, some work. So basically, we got to come up with some sentences that we can fill in that will cover some or all of this. I have the first sentence. Cool. Thanks. <coughs> Are you still twittering or tweeting? I'm not tweeting. <laughs> uh, the River Valley School District provides high quality instruction and engaged learning, which, which, which results in students demonstrating academic proficiency. That's good. Matt, how so quick can you type you? that? I'm typing it. Uh, the River Valley School District provides high quality instruction and engaged learning, which results in students demonstrating academic proficiency. I would love for that word to be excellence, but I will live to fight that another day, if necessary. <coughs> so, why are we fighting that? Yeah, okay. why? Right. Well, why? Mm. Because that's, yeah. I will say why. Because we can measure proficiency, we can't measure excellence. Yeah. Why not? Subjective, or it's a, subjective. You might think it's excellent, but it's not yeah. excellent. And we have proficiencies that we can measure mm -hmm. under educational quality standards. So we can actually, because this uh, has to be okay. measurable. Okay. Right? Uh, we have to be able to see it. The vision, what, that was your quote, right, Matt? What does it look like when you are there? So how about if we change that to, which results in all students demonstrating academic proficiency? Yes, all. That's part, that covers your equity. Yeah, it's a little better than that would be our first sentence okay. in our vision. Now we're going to talk about the board's commitment to community and school. So Matt, while Laura's typing, I'm going to start with something. The board 
We'll work with the community, administration, parents, and parents to ensure that sufficient resources are made available so that all students to, um, are made available to assist in, and I don't have it, to assist in all students demonstrate. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I didn't see what he typed, though. So. <laughs> I typed that I don't have it. Okay. To assist in. To support. To assist in. Achieving the schools for district goals. We have that there here, right? Okay. We have financial resources to support the school district to reach district goals. That's right. How about to support? That at a at a. Well, see, I was going to go. I, I need something in the middle there. The end would be at a. You know. Um, at a rate that the, that both you know the taxpayers can support. I got a word. Go ahead. I got a run-on sentence. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, the board will work with the community to ensure sufficient resources are available for the administration to do the work needed to meet the district's goals for its students, value for taxpayers, and a climate and culture which is appreciated by parents in the community. That's I mean, not fast, but. <laughs> Well, you got to get rid of will. We're there. Remember, the vision is we're there. Mm -hmm. the we're not willing works. it. It's happening. Right. The board works with the community. The will. With the the board works with the community to ensure sufficient resources are available for the administration to do the work needed to meet the district's goals for its students value for its taxpayers and a climate and culture which is appreciated by parents and the community. Okay. Um, <coughs> okay, because that covers all your different parties. Can I make a syntactical comment? Yeah. The use of the word which is probably best that. Uh, that is appreciated. E.B. White is very specific on when you should That's use true. which. <laughs> and has to have a comma involved in it somehow. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm a big fan. No, but you're just, we can, we can wordsmith this out, but you're okay. trying to get down the, <laughs> the, the yes. important stuff. Right. The pieces. So that includes all the pieces that we, we've yes. discussed over the includes most of the words except for equity. Yeah, so cool. say, yeah, equity. You say equity, equity, all students. But we have all in right. the right. For first all. How about for instead of it's for all students? Yes. Yes. Just long sentences. Sorry. It's, it's better we can edit it then. Yes. Okay. But again, we're trying to do it in a short I mean I, I don't mind the longer sentences. As long as we're getting our point across, and I think that's well, and it gives you guys a chance to read it and come back to it. Should we say administration and staff, or should it just be the administration? Should it just be the administration? Just well, the staff should just be the administration. Yeah, because they're the ones that direct the staff, right? Tammy, you direct your staff, so do you want staff in there? Or? I don't think it's necessary. Matt, you okay with that? Bill? Yeah, I'm going to take all this and then uh, Okay, so let's tighten it up. Yeah. All schools within the district shall provide equitable resources and opportunities to all students. Well, that would now, I don't so know that, that fits the, under how the board allows this to happen. Yeah. So go ahead and give them that for the next one for the end, how the board allows this work to happen. All schools within the, within the district shall provide equitable resources and opportunities to all students. So the board the board ensures that all schools within the district have Yeah. all the resources and opportunities. I mean I go over pretty quick, but Yeah, it should be great. Is that right? What, is that what you said? Yeah, yes. <laughs> That's good. 
Shouldn't it be the, the school board? Yeah. Oh, the, the school board. Yeah, school board will will set policies and goals for the administration that allows all schools and students within the district equitable opportunity. No, you didn't say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, policies and uh, goals. goals. Which allow, which or which provide for equitable resources and opportunities for all students, and then go back up into. I, I think he's, well, I was going to carry on all students to to meet the meet the uh, proficiency, whatever Laura had for that sentence in that first sentence. We did. Keep going on. Um, so, all, so that all students can demonstrate academic proficiency. Which have a culture of excellence. Provide for excellence. Remember, we don't want to use that excellence. I really want to a lot. I'm just trying to think about it. You know what? So the title of it can be Our Excellent Vision. <laughs> <laughs> then we're excellent. Vision. 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 Vision for excellence. That's excellent adventure, man. Vision for you. <laughs> Wild <laughs> stallions. <laughs> Do you, Lord, do you feel like I do that proficiency is like <laughs> the no, seat, but, but like minimum? Yeah. 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 yeah, here. Actually, no, yeah. that just doesn't. Mr. Chair? So yeah. Yeah. Like it's it's be yeah. Whenever you get that's this that's core that's thing, that's I would share it with all, let you guys think about it, and then come back with, you know, your idea, because you've got some great ideas. Just, you know, maybe wordsmith it, tighten it up. Yep, so here's what we, we kind of um, Cruz gave us, Chris, 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 Christine. Christine. The Unified School District envisions sharing resources and talents to provide outstanding educational opportunities in positive environments for our children. I mean, I think we kind of covered everything. In the measure outstanding no, I just that's what she had written for us last time. But uh, now I have a little bit more. So we had a little more guidance. We, we to say we've hit everything. So there are proficiencies. In there. So that's what you said. Put it there. Measure or not somebody's hit a proficiency. I think we have excellence up there. And okay, so Matt, that's you ready? You got another one? Yeah. yeah. The Unified School District <laughs> envisions sharing resources and talents to provide outstanding educational opportunities and in positive environments for our children. So the only thing, Matt, that first, all those first things that we did, the first three or four, that's one paragraph. What? Oh, we never finished that. Is that what happened? No, I think we, we moved on. So get, just get rid of that or read. So to assist in. No, get rid of that whole sentence, the board. That whole piece? Yeah. That okay. was my thought, and then Lauren fixed it. She fixed my thoughts. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so now you have no, starts there. That last sentence too goes with that. Okay. And this is a new one. School board will set. Oh, that's that's the last because remember there's three parts of a vision, so that I think covers all three of the parts. The school board. No, the school board will set policy. And goes with the other one. Okay. Goes up top. Right 
So then separate that unified school district. That's a separate vision statement. And do the same, or do vision statement two up here. Well, well that's for one, and then that's two. <coughs> District can't envision something. Well, I get that. So I think but that was just suggested the last meeting, so they wanted it up on there. So, so Matt, we're going to send that out to everybody because it's after nine. So let's look at it, and at our next meeting, which is a before annual meeting, yes, it's tomorrow, isn't it? No, I'm mean, at our next a real board meeting. meeting. <laughs> so that then we can hopefully wordsmith that first if you want to incorporate anything from the second one into that um, and just keep that one that piece of paper and remember vision those are the four or five things we want to focus on or have a vision statement to focus on because then I have kind of the whole is, is our checklist to make sure the vision statement does what it's supposed to do the next meeting is 19th and this Annual meeting. Okay, so we have an annual meeting. So we won't have a vision to report, but we can say we're working on a vision. We're working on our vision. We can see. I can see for miles and miles. <laughs> so, uh, the 19th, that's the school vacation week. So right, so you're here. not here. Is, so that, is there, there anybody else not going to be here? Will we have a quorum? I'll be here. You'll be here? You'll be here. Rick, you good? I will be here, yeah. I won't be here for the first meeting in March. Okay. You'll be here for that one, though. Yes. Cool. Okay, so I just need a, a quick executive session for contractual issues, and then we'll adjourn so everybody can take off, and I'll just send you an email with okay. what happened. Yeah, thank you for doing the uh, changes to the survey and writing that and being our secretaries for going along. <laughs> it's a big help. It was a lot nicer to be able to see it up there. Yeah. So we're going to need you at the next meeting, Matt. You are. That's the 19th? Yeah, but that'll be at Dover. Is that, we have a regular board meeting that night. Yep. I didn't think we did, but I was told we'd have enough people. Have a good hey, night. Miss Television Lady, so you need to. Yeah. I need a motion. Oh, somebody make a motion to move into executive session for contractual issues, please. I make a motion to move into executive session for contractual issues. At 907. 907. Barry seconded it. All those in favor say aye. Aye. aye.